Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor. And boy, oh boy, is everybody upset that Kevin McCarthy has released 40,000 hours of security footage from January 6th to Tucker Carlson over at Fox News Channel. Now, listen, I'm not very pleased because I want to have access to it too. We at Salem News Channel should be able to review it and come up with our own stories as well. But that's just a media rivalry. If anything, the fact that all the right people are going insane because it's Tucker Carlson, that makes it a good move. But more importantly, What's in that video? What are they afraid of everybody learning? Joining us now is the person who's covered January 6th like no other. It's Julie Kelly. She's the senior writer over at American Greatness. And I know you've been calling for this forever, Julie Kelly. So what are we going to see in this video? Well, hopefully we will see um, the answers to a lot of unanswered questions, Larry. Most importantly is why and how the Capitol was so unsecured that day. Uh, we know that, you know, they had now intelligence warnings saying that there might be violence that day. Every single agency had that. They didn't share it. You can see from the video that's now emerging, the body-worn camera footage is one, how unprotected areas of the Capitol were. In other areas, you had DC Metro Police showing up like armed stormtroopers attacking protesters. You had other areas where Capitol Police were letting people in. Yeah. Um, so that's just one of the few questions. Also, uh, unindicted conspirators, agitators, provocateurs, there's more than one, there's more than Ray Epps. Um, and so that's why you see this uh, just breathless overreaction to what it really belongs to the American people, to your point, and that is security footage paid for by American taxpayers at a public building during work hours where uh, public servants, we were once, once told, work. Julie, one of, Julie. The, one of the arguments you see here from uh, Jamie Raskin and Adam Kinzinger and other people who are part of the January 6th committee, they'll say, well, by releasing all of this footage, it's going to show locations of security cameras, and that's going to help the Proud Boys infiltrate the Capitol next time or something like that. Is there any validity to that concern? Well, only if you don't realize how many clips of security footage were was played, not just by the January 6th committee, I flagged at least nine camera angles that were played in one hearing alone, um, but also the House Impeachment Committee, which Jamie Raskin served on, also used numerous clips from the security footage allowed by the way, by Capitol Police. Uh -huh. So if it's okay for the House Impeachment Committee, okay for the January 6th Committee, okay for HBO, all these other entities uh, to access this national security material, as we're told, then it's okay finally for our side to have a fair shot and see exactly what those committees and the media, more importantly, have left out of the story about January 6th. Let's take a look at one part of the story that certainly doesn't get any coverage, and that's the fate of Victoria White. Now, our colleague here on Salem News Channel, Dinesh D'Souza, put out a picture of uh, Victoria White, Ms. White, as she was dying, basically. As you can see, she's surrounded by helmeted Capitol Police personnel. Although you tell me, uh, first of all, are those Capitol Police? Are those Metro Police? Do we know what type of police officers these are that encountered Ms. White? I interviewed Victoria White at the end of 2021. I have uh, a lot of her footage as well. She was brutally assaulted by two Metropolitan D.C. Metro police officers, okay. including you'll see the man with the white shirt, yeah. who is a lieutenant. Let's um, get to that video. It's so compelling. And before, but before we run it, can you just explain wh where is this happening? It looks like a tunnel, and you can see January 6th uh, protesters outside the tunnel and the police officers inside the tunnel. Is this an access point? It is. Um, this is where a lot of the violent, most of the violent confrontations between protesters okay. and oh, police happen. Right there. So, so you, you can see this one person in a white shirt reaching over police and this person is surrounded by police officers and he just keeps smacking her in the head and punching her in the head who is that person um i'm not sure of his name i believe it's bagwell um he was one of the two i believe who is beating her mercilessly now victoria white is a tiny woman she posed no threat to anyone there were a lot of people who seemed just stuck in that tunnel. This is where police retreated 
the line on the west side about three o'clock after they had basically gassed themselves. Uh -huh. They left the line. They went into this tunnel. A lot of people kind of followed in that way. And I think that people like Victoria um, advanced towards the building and they got stuck there. I if guess, you could see, yes, and that's the strange thing because they're, they're hitting her, but it looks like even if she wanted to comply and leave, she couldn't because she's surrounded. She is completely surrounded. She is basically a human pinata at that point, and she is being brutally assaulted by these police officers. And I believe it continued outside of that clip. They actually dragged her to the inside of the building. And I heard that some of that video is extremely disturbing well, as to what they continued to do to her when they dragged her inside the building. We have a little bit more footage from a police officer's body camera. Let's take a look at that. My goodness, that's just a short clip there, but you can see the mayhem right there. Um, what ended up happening, first of all, with Ms. White? So, believe it or not, she was taken to a D.C. Uh, police station. Uh, she was basically abandoned, freezing cold. These people were covered in tear gas. She lost her shoes. She lost her jacket in the assault. Uh, they dragged her through the Capitol, took her to a D.C. police station, booked her, dumped her basically in the middle of D.C. without her cell phone. She was able to borrow a phone from someone, call people who she had traveled with. They somehow found her in D.C., even with all the streets closed down. Uh, the FBI investigated her. She was arrested a few months later for crimes related to January 6th. It looks like she was going to take a plea deal, but Victoria changed her mind. Uh, and now she wants to go to trial. And trust me, this is the government's worst nightmare because they wanted her to accept this plea deal so they would prevent exactly that type of footage, not just that, but what happened afterwards yeah. uh, to be released to the public. This is the tip of the iceberg, though, Larry, in terms of police brutality. I've called January 6th the worst incident of police brutality since the civil rights era. And this is exactly why, one part, why DOJ, Capitol Police, and Democrats want this footage kept under wraps. They have made these police officers into heroes. In some cases, they were. For the most part, they were not. It, we had a months-long inquiry at the congressional level that was in prime time scripted. It was produced by a television producer. As far as you know, and you would know, has there been any internal investigation at least, or any internal inquiry into the actions that we're seeing on the camera here, either by DC Metropolitan Police or by the Capitol Police? I believe that there is uh, an in internal investigation reports for Capitol Police. They have not been made public. Capitol Police is part of the legislative branch, so they cannot be FOIA'd. I'm sure that there are reports for DC Metro Police instances of police brutality, um, but those have been buried as well. You'll remember, Larry, the woman who's accused of beating Roseanne Boyland, who died right outside of that tunnel that day, shortly after Victoria's beating, the police officer who beat Roseanne Boyland's lifeless body at around 425 that afternoon, Lila Morris, she was cleared of any wrongdoing by the DC Metropolitan Police Department. Wow. So, um, you know, that's the sort of thing that the American people deserve to see. They and do. especially the victims and defendants here. And they now they will. Out. And now they will. Uh, either it's through our friend Tucker Carlson or it's through other news outlets or maybe it's through a complete and open, transparent process. We're going to see it. And if uh, journalists are smart, they'll get Julie Kelly in the room with this video as well. Thanks for joining us. More to come on O'Connor tonight.